the day we arrive on the planet and blinking step into the sun there's more to be seen than can ever be seen more to do than can ever be done some say eat or be eaten some say live live and let Some of us fall by the wayside, and some of us soar to the stars, and some of us sail through our troubles, and some of us have to live with the skies. There's far too much to take in here, more to find than can ever be found. But the sun rolling high. Sapphire sky keeps great and small ones on the endless round and the circle of life. It's the wheel of fortune, it's the leap of faith, it's the band of hope till we find our place. Oh, good morning. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Kristen. It's beautiful. Welcome. Welcome to Unity of Gainesville Zoom service on this fifth Sunday of January 2021. We're so glad you're joining us. And I'm Joe Sherwood, and I'll be serving as your celebration assistant this morning. And we are so fortunate to have Reverend Jeannie Ward with us this morning. She's going to be talking about um, faith. Her topic is Faith 2.0, Redefining Faith. She asks us, what is faith? Is it overcoming obstacles and moving mountains? Is it knowing that in the midst of darkness, doubt, or uncertainty, that the light is always there? Is it courage in the face of fear? What is it? Reverend Jeannie admits at times, I'm not sure I know. Sometimes I feel like my faith is faltering or I have lost it and I'm not sure what to do. As she shares her insightful exploration of faith, Reverend Jeannie may inspire you to redefine or refine your concept of faith. Did everybody get their packet in the mail? Um, all of our uh, 2020 contributors were sent a, a, a letter of appreciation for their contributions, um, along with the announcement of our upcoming um, congregational business meeting and um, membership renewal forms uh, or database update. So pl please um, return those 
if you haven't already, and if you are missing anything from the packet or did not receive a packet, um, please call our church office and leave a message for Wanda. She'll she'll be sure to get get you what you're missing. Um, for those who are new to Unity of Gainesville, I'd just like to share my um, what I love about Unity of Gainesville. It's it's mostly opportunity. You know, we have right here the opportunity to increase our spiritual growth, our personal growth, our friendships. And we, we are not confined to any restrictions of you have to do it this way or that way. We get to explore and we have wonderful um, teachers and um, fellow seekers to um, be with us in this journey. Talking about journey, I'd like to introduce uh, Kristen Justice again as our um our musician for today, and she's going to be um, playing Joy in the Journey. So, Kristen, thank you. Yes, this is a beautiful song by the beautiful Megan McDonough. She is a New Thought uh, singer-songwriter, and uh, it's just a great reminder to always, the joy is not out there somewhere. Joy, the joy is inside and in the here and now. On all of the paths that are pointed to peace, and all of the cues that are promised release. The message was in all of these. The joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey. In all of the books I've read and reread, in all of the lectures that play in my head. Great ones have said the joy is in the journey, the joy is in the journey, the joy is in the journey for me. Now don't be mistaken or misled, my friend. I've had my days with the blues, but when I am down, I am held back again. Someone who's been there too. In all of the good times, and all of the bad, and all of the chances I've forgotten I've had, the kindness of thoughts always comes back. The joy is in the journey. The joy is in the journey, 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 the joy is in the journey. Thank you guys. Thank you, Kristen Justice. The joy is in the journey. What a wonderful message. Good morning, my name is LaVon Hoagland. I am a prayer chaplain with Unity of Gainesville. Welcome. We believe in the importance and the power of prayer. If you would like to request a prayer, a prayer for something that's on your heart or mind, I invite you to go to our website, 
there, there is a request for prayer button and just click that and leave your request for us, those of us on the prayer team, and we will be glad to pray with you. You may also download the free Silent Unity You Pray app for your mobile phone. And here you may request prayer at any time. I have that on my phone and I find I use it quite a bit. And so I invite you to try that out. You may also check out silentunity.org. Our daily word for today is now. I find my power in this very moment. Would you please join me in saying this affirmation? I find my power in this very moment. There is power in this very moment. Yesterday is past and tomorrow is not yet here. There is only this moment, ripe with promise and potential, ready for me to live into it fully. Through my many divine gifts, everything I need to get started is within me. I need not wait for the perfect moment to arrive because there is no time more perfect than now and no place more perfect than here. Procrastination has no place in my life. I fritter away my energy when I find reasons not to get started, losing my zeal and focus and inviting frustration into my life. Today, I claim the power of the present and say, this is the day I begin. Now is the time to begin to serve, to forgive, to create and to love. From 2 Corinthians 6 2. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. Please join me in praying over the requests which have been placed in our prayer list. You may also speak into this sacred space, the names or situations of those you wish to include in prayer. You may do that at this time. We know for these names spoken and unspoken, that God is the active energy of life, love, health, and peace. As we release this prayer to the energy of the divine, we know and affirm that all is working for the highest and best in all conditions. And so it is. Amen. And now, it is indeed my pleasure to invite Reverend Jeannie Ward to share her message. Thank you so much, LaVon. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. It is truly my honor and joy and privilege to hold space this morning with all of you to co-create in this most magnificent moment of now. And I welcome all viewers who will tune in perhaps now or later at some point in time to partake of this spiritual food and nourishment that we are offering here this morning uh, at Unity of Gainesville through this virtual vast experience of knowing that right here and now God is in the midst. As you can even see behind me, uh, this beautiful expression of the divine as nature invite you this morning as we journey on this. In fact, Kristen, I appreciate everything's about a journey this morning, so it's great what, what you were singing about and, and what LaVon was saying. 
that it really is an exploration this morning. Uh, it's a journey of taking a look at faith and, and asking the question, uh, what is faith? You know, do I have it? Uh, when did I have it? How did I know when I ever got it or did I? Uh, in our humanness, sometimes we, we uh, get caught up in, well, I've, I've got to have it because if I don't have it, then perhaps it means I'm not being spiritual or perhaps I'm not praying properly or there's something about my practice or about me that is just not quite getting what faith is. So I like to, to think of perhaps this morning as being, how about a spiritual faith lift? this morning, okay? We talk about a facelift and we talk about all these things being shifted and changed and, and rearranged and such. So perhaps we could think of faith in that way. It's time for a faith lift. So as we explore, we can look at the different aspects of what is happening in our experience of faith so that we, we are in the world out there, we're anchored into a solid foundation. And we're anchored into something that we know is unshakable and we can breathe into it, we can lean into it, and we can know that all is truly well, no matter what is happening in the world out there. <clears throat> what I wanted to draw from this morning, there's a book by uh, the gentleman's name is, uh, he's actually a community minister and has been since 1980. His name is Reverend Robert Brume. I think that's how you pronounce it, B-R-U-M-E-T. And he was an uh, instructor at Unity Village. And he also founded, the, I didn't realize they had a mindfulness center there, which was surprising to me. But in any case, he, he's written several books. He's, a, he's an author as well. And he wrote a book called The Quest for Wholeness. And in this book, he explores the aspect of faith among other things. But I wanted to share a little bit uh, from what he has to say and then bring in some things from Charles Fillmore as well as again, just examining faith and exploring it as to what it is or what it isn't, and how this morning we can begin to define what it is for us, because just like our personal relationship with the God of our understanding, I think faith is very personal. It's a very intimate thing, and all that matters is how we experience that for ourselves so that we can be walking in faith, if you will, or knowing that we are the demonstration of faith in action. Okay, so a couple of the things that he says is faith, like wholeness itself, is a divine idea. A divine idea exists beyond the domain of time and space. We cannot describe it, define it, or conceptualize it. Like God, it's a mystery. How often have we heard God's a mystery when we, we can say, oh, I know what God is, but if we try to define it, God is ineffable. And what that means is there's no way to describe God. So faith is similar to that in that regard that it's the, I think as, as Charles Fillmore puts it, the, um, sub, what is it, the substance of things that, that we know, but it's in our perception of how we actually recognize faith. Uh, Charles Fillmore says, you must first enter into the understanding that God, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, is the source, and that you can draw on this source without limit. It's inexhaustible, that inexhaustible supply that we can tap into, and, and what I in, in my personal life, and what I encourage people to do is we can become the embodiment of it. So we're not feeling like we always have to reach out and, and grab faith or bring it into us that we can recognize, yes, we draw from source, but we can be that demonstration, that embodiment of it. And that, I think, helps us to get a sense of, okay, well, maybe that's a way that I am defining it for me. Perhaps I can take that concept and Maybe that resonates with me, or maybe it doesn't. And again, there's no perfect way to do it that it has to fit into a certain mold. That's what's so beautiful about unity. Many paths, right? One power, one present, but many paths and many different understandings. And to me, faith is like that. 
I could say, well, this, this works for me, and this allows me to be the best vessel and conduit of the Christ consciousness. And maybe faith in that way doesn't really suit me. So what matters most, again, is that it's your perception and it's your divine idea of what feels right for you and what you can truly lean into and feel that assurance and that grounding and that knowing. And I don't mean a knowing in the head. It's a knowing in the heart. Charles goes on to say, I refuse to be anxious about tomorrow or even the next minute. I know that God does provide for the fulfillment of his divine idea, and I am that divine idea. That's basically what I just said, the embodiment of it, that we claim it, believe it, and it's in the you know, we hear what seeing is believing. Well, to me, it's the other way around. It's in the believing that we see the outpicturing and that demonstration through our faith. So just breathe, breathe that in for a minute. Okay, just breathe that in and, and see how that, how that lands with you. Just see how that fits for you. So back to Robert Rume and, and how he goes on to, to share some of his ideas. A divine idea has infinite possibilities for expressing itself in the realm of time and space. As with any divine idea, we can only come to know it through our what? Our direct experience of it. I mean, how many of you listening right now and how many of you in the room right now could say, you know, there was a moment in my life when I knew and I felt that presence. It was it was unquestionable. It was right there, and I knew it. I was anchored, and, and I could feel, because, you know, we're sensory beings. Remember, we're spiritual beings, but we're in a human body, so we can have that sensory experience and feel that presence and know that what? We're not alone, because right now, you know, we're in 2021, okay, Everybody was like, oh, let's get the heck out of 2020. I can't wait to, to get out of there. I can't, it can't happen fast enough, right? So I think a lot of people have been going, oh, if 2021 just gets here, everything's going to be all right. Well, we're at the last day of the month, right, of January. And I bet if we took a poll, there would be a lot of people thinking, I don't think we're in another year. We're in the same year. It doesn't feel any different because stuff is still happening. And and even more so now, things are bumping up against stuff and energy and, and the polarity and all of these energies that are just, well, I, I can't even find the words because, again, it's an experience as these energy beings that we can feel especially for folks who might be what they consider HSP, highly sensitive people, or if you are an empath, somebody who is extremely sensitive to energies, you're really going to feel bombarded at times and what's going on out there. And, and we're gonna end up here trying to figure it out and trying to make sense of it. When to me, we're continuing to be called to open ourselves to the most delicious and delectable relationship and experience with God by asking the question, what is it that I believe in? Do I believe what, in a God that is for me? Or do I find myself self still leaning sometimes or getting tripped up in that victimization energy of no life is happening to me because it just doesn't feel good. Well, let me reassure you, just because something doesn't feel good, that doesn't mean that you're a victim. It means that there is a lot that you are being called to examine like we are this morning. You're being called to go within and, and excavate and to break up the old patterns, to break up the old paradigms so you can have that faith lift. So you can have a fresh new expression and understanding and an anchoring 
into the Almighty, into all that is, so that as we move into February and in linear time, and into the month after that, and the month after that, that we can just know that our faith is strong and that we are listening, that we're paying attention. And I mean listening with, you know, that, that our inner ears and we're seeing with our inner eyes. That we have the clarity through our faith. And we have that understanding. It's kind of like peace, the peace that passes all understanding. It's the faith may also that passes all understanding. It's that knowing within you that you are not alone. God is right here in the midst, just like in the forest behind me. We could all walk into that forest today, and I know we would feel that power and presence of the ineffable. I like how Robert Vermey says, faith is like the wind. We can see its effect, but we cannot see the thing itself. The thing itself, how often have you heard that expression? God is like the thing itself. What is it? Faith can be expressed as a so-called miracle, and faith can be expressed in the quiet workings of nature. It's true character. The true character of faith is that it is indeed a mystery. And its manifestations might be commonplace or even more mysterious than sometimes we can begin to comprehend in our human mind but we can comprehend it when we are one in the divine mind, which is also in the heart. When I say mind, just understand that what I'm coming from this morning is that knowing in the heart, the coherence between the heart and the head, that is a very different kind of place than just the intellectual knowing of God. So we can say that faith is power. Faith is a power to see and envision that possibility it's making real through our perception so that we can recognize something when it's happening and be able to pierce through that outer illusion and see beyond what is presenting itself, knowing that in every moment there is a divine unfolding in every moment that's going on, that God is right there in the middle of it. You know, again, as human beings, we want to have evidence. It's like, well, show me, prove it to me. Okay, God, I'm going to, you know, give you an ultimatum. Has anybody ever done that before? Anybody ever given God an ultimatum? I, I'm going to put up my hand and say that I have, because that's certainly been my humanness at times. I'm like, okay, I'm over this. I need proof. I need something to show up so that I can just know because I'm maybe I'm so scared or I'm feeling alone or I'm feeling separate. All of those human things that we experience. So I need a sign. Part the skies, let the heavens, let the heavens open up and let the angels come down. I need to know. And often what happens is we have an idea, right? We have an expectation of something showing up and looking a certain way. And then we have said, aha, if it shows up like that, then I know that that's my proof positive that, okay, I can believe in this God now because God has, has complied with my wishes, right? Wouldn't this make a great discussion? I bet we could have a really lively discussion about all the times when we have done something like that and, and that we could admit it to ourselves and and that gives us more of an opportunity to embrace all that we are and to say, yes, in those moments, in my humanness, that's, that's what I have done. And there is nothing wrong with it. There's nothing about it to judge myself. It's saying that's part of my uh, obstacle course, if you will. It's part of my, uh, you could think of a spiritual workout. You know, when you, when you get in there and, and you're really going for it, and sometimes it's uncomfortable or you do things that are, you know, you might not want to tell anybody about because you're afraid to admit it. 
So oftentimes being authentic, being honest with yourself, it exposes you in that vulnerability and in your, your true humanity so that the faith that you continue to strengthen and grow, that faith allows you to be open and accepting and offer compassion to your fellow human. Because when you, when you think about faith, you're thinking, okay, faith in God, the God of my understanding. You're thinking faith in myself. Ooh, do I have faith in myself? And then faith in humanity. Because right now, I believe a lot of folks have lost their faith in humanity when they see everything that's happening in the world out there. I think that foundation, if there has been one for some folks, or their idea of faith that they've had so far has been shaken, turned upside down, broken into a million pieces because they're seeing human beings behaving and acting in certain ways that go against the grain of the God of our understanding. And so we, we can't find a way sometimes to make sense of it or to understand it and that's what I said earlier, when we are solid and anchored in our understanding, we're able to admit our humanness and, and all of those places within us and all the shadows and, and all of the things that make us the beautiful divine being that we are. When we can do that, it's so much easier to do it for another and to recognize in our shared humanity is where we connect. It's where we can grow our faith. It's where we can plant our seeds and allow our individual and collective consciousness to begin to expand and to come into its own, if you will, because that's what we're here for. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. We're here to expand the Christ consciousness. We're here to uplift and have that moment of knowing that, thank you, God, that those difficult challenges have happened. Thank you that I am in a place now in my life, perhaps, where I could admit things to myself without the judgment and without the, that self-critical voice in there. We can just love it and begin to strengthen our belief and our faith in ourselves as well. So Robert Brume, if anybody's interested in his, in his book, uh, again, it's called The Quest for Wholeness. And uh, he explores a lot of wonderful things in it. And I really just wanted to, to share some of that with you this morning. Uh, one of the things too, uh, I'd like to think of faith is about courage. And that if you think about what I've been saying already, a lot of this requires courage. Does it require courage to really look at yourself honestly and openly? Does it require courage to say, okay, however that person is pushing all my buttons or however all those events out there are triggering everything in me, do I have the courage? Am I willing to muster up that courage to face it with, to faith it really? to face it with in my faith so we can faith it and stand there with it and, and go, okay, you know what? When I'm anchored in faith, I feel free because I'm not constricted anymore by those limiting, scary thoughts. And I, I have an assurance that's flowing through me. And that feels so much better in my human experience and in me saying, you know what? Now like the unity principle, the fifth principle, it's not enough to know all this stuff, you guys, that we talk about all the time. It's about putting it into action. It's about being that divine demonstration. Faith in action. And that's going to look different for each of us. Is your faith a resilient faith? Is, a, is it a diminished faith? What is it? 
for you? And are you willing to take a look at it this morning? Are you willing to go into your, your uh, faith excavation toolbox and say, okay, I'm putting on my gear and I'm getting ready and I'm gonna go in and explore and see how do I define my faith for me? What is it? How do I know that I have it? And rather than me saying, oh, I've got all the answers to all the questions, I would never say that to you anyway. I'm gonna say dance in those questions. Continue to explore those questions because in that exploration, in that self-inquiry, in going in and taking the inventory is where you're going to discover the most ineffable experiences of God. So I want to close my, my talk this morning with a couple more quotes that I just really spoke to me so, so powerfully and will kind of reiterate what I've been sharing with you this morning. Mahatma Gandhi says, you must not lose faith in humanity. Humanity is like an ocean. If a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the ocean does not become dirty. Think about that for a moment. Even us as individuals in this collective experience and individuals that are out there now, and you might think, oh, I know there's a lot of dirty drops in the ocean and I see them on TV and I hear them here and they're there and everywhere. So it calls you to what? To do your own purification, to do what you're called to do so that as you see those things out there, your energy can be one that is transmuting and transforming in the oneness. Alan Watts, some of you are probably familiar with him. To have faith is to trust yourself to the water. When you swim, you don't grab hold of the water because if you do, you will sink and drown. Instead, you relax, and float. Just imagine that for a moment. Relaxing, surrendering, letting go, trusting that God of your understanding, the ineffable source will support you no matter what. And Martin Luther King, I wanted to finish with this quote because most of us have heard it. But in those moments when you're in doubt, you're just not sure. He says that faith is taking the first step even when you cannot see the whole staircase. So that's what I invite you to do this morning. From this moment on, on your journey of exploration, of redefining your faith and, and refining it again so that you can just go, oh, yes. What a perfect resonance. So just breathe into that. Enjoy the journey, this continued journey that we have started with each other this morning. You can all go on an expedition. And in that place of oneness, we can support and uplift each other with our individual and collective faith here in community at Unity of Gainesville and beyond. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Reverend Jeannie. What a wonderful message that we all need to hear. I know I needed to hear it. And before we go on our journey into our meditation time, let's just relax into some words of gratitude.
Now we'll take this time to express our gratitude as Kristen has just been singing about so beautifully. I invite you to get comfortable right where you are and begin to notice your breath breathing you right now. Just feel that breath of God. Bringing you all that you need. Blessing you this morning right here and now. As it's bathing you in the light of the beloved. It's bathing you in a balm of blessings and joy and peace. Through our faith, through our believing, we see and know that God is everywhere and in everything, omniscient, omnipresent. So we journey this morning with each other in community. We journey with all others throughout the world. And we allow ourselves to be guided through our faith, by our faith. With every breath we breathe, we, we feel an experience within us that stirs us to the very core. It awakens the places within us that have become numb, the places within us that have fallen asleep, the places within us that perhaps we have buried and placed many things that find us and we have been uncertain as to what to do with them. In the recesses of our mind and our heart and our body and our very being. We allow our breath of faith this morning to find its way in around and through all those nooks and crannies. We allow it to, to loosen and to shake loose all of those remnants, perhaps of anger and bitterness, of doubt, of fear, perhaps trauma, pain and suffering that is still lodged somewhere in our being and in our body. We allow our heart and our mind to open fully as we relax and rest. And remember that God is right here with us, right here and now. Breathing it in effortlessly and easily. We make space for bravery and boldness and beauty and all the many energies of God to infuse us this morning, to nourish every cell and fiber of our being. 
to dissolve the doubt, to erase the uncertainty, to create a space for the Holy Spirit to wash down upon us and purify and cleanse our heart, our mind, our body, our soul, and all of the things and spaces and places in between so that we may be washed and cleansed, ready to, to build and grow a new foundation anchored in all that is, anchored in the knowing and the assurance in the knowing and assurance and in the promise of this most ineffable God, the mysterious God, the miraculous God. We breathe in that divine idea and allow it to find its home and place within us so that we may truly be that divine demonstration of faith, freedom, and allow that flow to carry us throughout every experience as we move forward, as we rise upward, and onward on our path of being the light, the love, and the joy overflowing with compassion in our hearts, courage leading the way. We walk up into that lighthouse of faith and allow our beam to radiate throughout the world, throughout the cosmos, allowing others, encouraging others, inspiring others, to anchor their faith into all that is, into the absolute. And for this meditation, for this affirmation, for this intention and declaration, we say thank you, God, for this moment now. Fortifying our faith, we are grateful for the faith lift this morning. And so it is. Thank you, thank you, Kristen. Um, 
It's so good to be reminded that we're not alone. To Thank you, Reverend Jeannie. Your message was wonderful. The meditation, let us absorb that knowingness of our faith and 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 to remember to share what we have. It's it's beautiful and, and thank you. I'd I'd like to uh, let you know that next week we're we're going to have Reverend Danny Spears and Jennifer Farron as our musician. Um, we'll look forward to that. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity now to invite you to contribute your financial love and support to this spiritual community that we call home. There's a link in our chat box that will take you to ways to donate. We have our, our text to give number shown on the screen, 833-987-2047. Um, please know that every gift is important. The energy of your love and support carries us forward and helps Unity of Gainesville to make a difference in people's lives. So um, please make sure you're muted before joining me in setting the intention of these gifts. We'll say divine love as me blesses and multiplies all that I choose to give and all that I am open to receive. I give in love and receive in abundance. Thank you, God. I am so blessed. All right. So I wanted to share this song with you guys that I just wrote, and it's called Keeping the Faith. I was actually going to play this last week, but I changed I changed it up because I kept trying to sing. <laughs> I try to listen, and so uh, the other song kept coming through last week. So this is the song for this week. And for me, this song was is about me keeping the faith and remembering how and my journey on it. And one of my biggest uh, testing of my faith was when I wasn't uh, when I wasn't getting pregnant and I couldn't get pregnant and. You know, there was nothing more that I wanted in this world than to be a mother and to have that experience. And it was really painful, you know, going through that and trying to keep the faith through that. And going through the in vitro process was really a big test in faith for me. And I think it's a test in faith for a lot of women. And this song is just a reminder, just, just keep the faith. Things don't always come in the timeline that you want them to. At times we can be very impatient to want everything now, but we are very human and this is our experience. And so this is a song called Keeping the Faith. Name of the 
bless these gifts knowing they come from love and gratitude to bring abundance to this community in order to be of spiritual service according to divine will and now you may all join in praying the prayer for protection we will bring this service to a close at the end of this prayer. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen.